Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Luscombe, and today we're checking out how to become a session guitarist. So I think the first point to look at here would be your overall musicianship. So what kind of guitarist are you currently? What kind of level are you playing at? Have you done grades before or had lessons before to get some feedback? What kind of styles can you play in? What kind of techniques do you currently know? So these can all be really helpful as to make you more versatile as a musician and to help you get more work. And that will lead you on pretty quickly to things like music theory. So what kind of music theory do you currently have? That's bound to come up some point in the studio when you're bouncing ideas back and forth or being asked to do a particular job. And it's going to help you unlock more of your potential or creativity at the same time. Now with studios, a lot of the time they may ask that you read music if you're coming in to do a session and the musical director or whoever is in charge of the session may have actually got the dots for you in advance or they're going to give them to you right there in front of you. So don't always expect it to be in things like Guitar Tab. Sometimes it might be chord charts or if you're working in places like Nashville, it could be using the Nashville number system, which is when you replace the letter names with numbers. So that enables you to change key very quickly without having to write out all of the letter names again. And sight reading can be problematic for a lot of guitarists, but if you are able to improve on that, that's going to be a really great skill to hone and to work on so that you can make yourself more attractive and get more work from it. So chords and scales for guitarists, I would recommend knowing them all in at least five different positions on the neck. So this is sometimes called the caged system, and that allows you to be close in your area of what key you're in or whatever proximity to the fretboard you're in so that you're not having to leap around and you can do things smoothly and change ideas smoothly. And just knowing different voicings and you know different types of chords can be a great thing to excite the producer with or the, the artist that you're working with and just really come up with your own unique ideas. So improvising could be one of them. How well can you come up with ideas on the spot? Are you able to improvise a guitar solo? Can you come up with particular riffs or phrases on the spot? So knowing your kind of scale knowledge for this is obviously going to help a lot. So looking beyond things like the pentatonic scales and looking at the full major scale modes would be really beneficial to know things like the C major scale all over the neck would be a really good starting point. And from that, I would say, what kind of gear do you have? So when I do a session, I like to take along quite a few guitars to get different sounds. So I have a Fender Stratocaster that is armed with a humbucker pickup, which makes it quite a versatile instrument. I have a Telecaster when I want that more country rock kind of sound. And when it comes to playing acoustics, I like to use Moton guitars. So Moton guitars are from Australia and they sound great plugged in and they sound great mic'd up as well. So I think they're a really good choice for the kind of gigging working musician. So with your gear, you might also sometimes have to bring along amplifiers, depending on where the location is. If it's in the middle of somewhere like central London near where I'm based, that could be a problem because you can't always drive to these places. So it may be that you need to take along some pedals instead. So having a good pedal board, especially with things like overdrive pedals and booster pedals, because chances are the studio is going to do all the kind of time-based effects in post-production anyway, and things such as reverbs and delays, you're probably not going to put that through the front end. So a lot of the time, having things like a really good booster pedal or overdrive pedal is a great thing to have to get a good sound on the way in. So other things could include, you know, spare cables, having the right kind of picks, having a spare pack of strings, having a tuner, probably one of the most important pedals you can have, and just making sure that you're really organized and ready for anything once you go into that session. So speaking of transport, I think it's really important that you drive as a session guitarist as well, or any kind of session musician, because it could be that you're in the middle of nowhere, expecting to get there without public transport may not always be possible, especially if you're bringing a, a heavy load with you. So I always make sure that you um, have the right kind of transport available or the use of public transport if you're in a kind of city area. And then from that, I think after the pandemic, a lot of us have had to work remotely 
So what kind of setup do you have at home? Do you have any kind of ability to record high quality audio from your home? Can you just work along to a WAV that a producer or artist may send you to work with? And from that, you may actually be able to do the sessions from your own house and email them to the people who you've never even met face to face, but you're able to actually do the session for them and get paid for it without ever even leaving your home. So speaking of producers, they're great people to know. You learn a lot when you work with producers. I've really enjoyed working with producers like Stevie V of Dirty Cash fame. And I always get a lot of a lesson, basically, when I when I work with him. I always learn so much. So working with good engineers like Lee Head, who's also a producer. He has credits with Netflix and BBC and all kinds of things. So it's great to know these people. And from that, you get to know other artists and other recommendations as well. So through knowing Lee Head, I got to do a session with Thomas Benjamin Wilde Esquire, who's pretty big on the comedy charts at the moment, if you check him out. And um, I got to play on his second album. And that was a great experience because I'd never done that kind of work before, working with a ukulele player and vocalist. And in some cases, I've actually ended up lending a hand at playing other instruments as well. So I might have done a ukulele session myself. So being able to play a different stringed instrument. So I hope that's useful for how to become a session guitarist. If you have any other ideas, put them in the comments below. As ever, these are just some ideas. There are other ways that you could accomplish this. And I think it's really about networking. So getting to know your local area and getting to know the local studios, what kind of musicians are in your area and then taking it from there.